We're going to speak just briefly about endodontic diagnosis, but my assertion is there's a significant number of diseased teeth that need endodontics and they're not being identified. Our profession is excellent at finding toothaches, but I'm talking about irreversibly involved pulps, the patient is asymptomatic, and general dentist is doing his job and he's going to be doing restorations. We need to do the pulp testing so we should identify is the pulp sound, is it healthy, can that tooth take another dental procedure. So our patients oftentimes give us their chief complaint. And then of course the three phases of the exam are the clinical examination where you can pull back lips, look in the vestibule, look for discolored teeth, oftentimes secondary to trauma. And then also we can lift up the fornix of the vestibule and look in there and see tattoos from an old silver point in that central incisor. Notice the perilous and there's a gutta percha point tracing that sinus tract and it'll trace into a lesion of endodontic origin. So our clinical exam can find swellings, we can look at pocketing, we can look at existing restorations, missing teeth, and all this comprises part of our endodontic clinical examination. Now listen, I gotta get you better on your vital pulp testing. This is how you decide through hand signals the immediacy, the intensity, and the duration of the response. And if we begin to do this on opposing teeth, contralateral teeth, and adjacent teeth, we can get pretty good at locking that patient in so they know what we're looking for and they don't fool us and we don't fool them. The third phase in the endodontic examination is the radiographic exam. And the thing to emphasize here is the importance of getting two to three well-angulated different horizontal views. By doing this, you'll see more of the in and out dimensions of the tooth, buccal lingual or facial lingual.